everybody. This is Miss Moriarty. I'm here to discuss with us our topic 8.4, which is all about human impacts on wetlands as well as uh, mangroves. Uh, so we know that we discovered yesterday as well as today in our discussions on our wetland mitigation activity that wetlands are oftentimes areas that are covered by uh, water and the soil is going to be covered by water for either part of the time or pretty much all of the time. We know that wetlands provide a variety of ecological services. And remember, for our AP exam, we have to know these four types of services and what kind of falls into these types of categories. Uh, so a provisioning surface we know is some sort of resource that's going to be provided to either humans or maybe animals in the surrounding habitat. So that's why here we see that a provisioning service could be a habitat for organisms, maybe even food. Uh, regulating type surface would be promoting groundwater recharge in terms of aquifers, the absorption of flood water, uh, and carbon sequestration, right, capturing that carbon dioxide. Supporting services are things that are going to help to maintain the stability of that ecosystem. So that would be things such as water uh, filtration, pollinator habitats, nutrient cycling with carbon and nitrogen, as well as pest control. And then lastly, a cultural service would be things such as tourism revenue, uh, fishing license, uh, camping, uh, or educational medical research. Now, threats to wetlands and mangroves can include anything that is commercial development, maybe even dam construction, overfishing, and pollutants that come from agricultural or industrial waste are all threats to either a wetland or a mangrove. Some other examples um, of threats to specifically mangroves, which are going to be found more uh, along the coast and typically relate to more marine type waters versus wetlands, which are more freshwater type ecosystems. Uh, we can see that nearby logging can cause alteration and fragmentation of that area in the forest. Um, we can see that aquaculture uh, causes pretty much half of mangrove loss globally due to the shrimp culture uh, found there, as well as pollution we know can end up in the roots of those then organisms. Uh, they can be easily smothered and clogged by sediment or solid waste or oil. Uh, coastal development, urbanization on coastal environments tend to drive the loss of mangrove habitats and degradation. Um, and we also see climate change, air temperature, rainfall changes are going to influence global mangrove distribution. It could ab abrupt the changes of sea levels and cause either local or maybe regional types extinctions of organisms that reside in mangroves. So just really quick, if you want to pause the video at this point and see if you can answer our practice question here, which of the following is most likely to result from the destruction of wetlands surrounding a river? All right, at this point, you should have paused the video and see if you have the correct answer. Well, here the correct answer would be E, right? So if we saw destruction of a wetland uh, surrounding a nearby river, we're probably gonna see an increase in frequency of flooding in that river valley because we know that as a part of the services that wetlands provide, they help to provide flood control. All the vegetation that resides there helps to then absorb the water and maintain the soil structure. Without that, we're going to see a lot of flooding. All right, everybody, make sure that you took notes as you watch this video and please mark this as done.